Panther fans get their wish, and the Carolina Panthers fill a massive need at edge rusher Jadavion Clowney. Welcome home. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter at Julian Council, where on Fridays throughout the offseason, like tomorrow, I'm right here on the show answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions either at me or DM me over on Twitter at Julian Council to get your questions in for this week's edition of the weekly Friday mailbag right here on Locked on Panthers. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets of any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started today. What a dreary couple of days we've had here in the lovely Queen City of Charlotte, North Carolina, and how nice it was to be driving around in this awful rainstorm and to finally get some good news pertaining to the Carolina Panthers. Now, the Panthers have had plenty of good news this offseason, bringing in Robert Hunt, Damian Lewis, DJ Wunham. That's a positive signing. There have been plenty of positives since the new league year started two weeks ago, but there has not been a signing I think that Panther fans really thirsted over quite as much as the one we're going to talk about today. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Rightfully so, Panther fans should want this player on their team. They should want someone who's a native son of the Charlotte area to be here in Carolina. And you should want to have something to have hope about, that this organization can turn things around under Dave Canales as their head coach. Uh, under Brant Tillis as the EVP of football operations. And of course, Dan Morgan being elevated to the GM position and president of football operations. I was driving around Charlotte on Thursday afternoon. Really, I was coming from downtown Belmont. Why I was coming from downtown Belmont, don't worry about that. I was at Catawba River Outfitters getting a new backpack. That's why I was there. When I saw the news that Jadavion Clowney, the former South Point High School Stallion, former South Carolina Gamecock, the former Houston Texan, former Cleveland Brown, former uh, Tennessee Titan, former Baltimore Raven, former Seattle Seahawk, will be signing back home with the Carolina Panthers on a two-year $20 million deal, wow, with a max value of $24 million. I was caught off guard by this, as I have mentioned here on the show, and has already been thrown in my face on Twitter, at Julian Council, by the way, and uh, we have fun. <laughs> Clowney has signed a deal in March for the first time in his career. We'll go over that here momentarily. But first things first, this obviously is a significant signing for the Carolina Panthers for a player coming off a nine and a half sack season. Never mind the fact that he's from the area, the fact that he's coming off of a quality year with the Ravens getting nine and a half sacks. The Panthers needed a starter or someone of experience at the edge rusher position. I don't think that should preclude them from getting an edge rusher in the draft. We'll talk more about that momentarily. But the Panthers needed to find someone. Even had Brian Burns stayed in Carolina, they needed another starter at edge rusher. Once they traded away Brian Burns to the Giants, bringing in DJ Wunham, that's great. Bringing in Caleb on chase on, he's not expected to be a starter. They still needed to find someone, or they were going to have to rely on DJ Johnson, Amari Barno, Eku Leota, and potentially a rookie draft pick, whether that be in day two of the draft, day three, to step up. And at the start at that other at the other edge rushing spot opposite of DJ Wunham. So that is why this is significant. And they beat out the Jets and the Ravens for Clowney, two teams that aspire to be Super Bowl contenders in 2024. It's the New York Jets. Don't ever believe that they're contenders, whether Aaron Rodgers' Achilles is intact or not. 
it's still the Jets, but this is a team that paid a ton of money for Mike Williams. Now, the reports have said that Mike Williams gave the Panthers an opportunity to match. They said no. We're fine. And now we know why they were fine because they wanted to give Jadavion Clowney two years, $20 million, and potentially $24 million if he hits on the incentives. I'm curious to see what the breakdown guaranteed money wise is. It's 4 30 on Wednesday, March 27th. So I've not seen, I think I've already said it's Thursday. I get my day. You're watching this or listening to this on Thursday, but I get my days mixed up. It's been a long week and it's only the middle of the week for your boy. So I want to see what the guarantees are for Clowney, but that's significant money significant did not expect the Carolina Panthers to give him that much but the reporting also from Jordan Schultz that we talked about earlier on the show this week Clowney was looking to be able to get paid off of that nine and a half sack season and he's entering into the final stages of this career that is a great payday for the player and a curious payday for the team here in Carolina my main question though is which should Avion Clowney or the Carolina Panthers going to get who are they getting are they going to get the guy who in his final two years in Houston had nine and a half sacks and nine sacks and was a pro bowler? Or are they going to get the guy that he's been the last five seasons going from Seattle to Tennessee to Cleveland to Baltimore? 2019 in Seattle, three sacks. It's only one stat. It doesn't tell the complete story, but I know there's obsession over getting home. And Jadavion Clowney got home three times that year in Seattle in 2020 with the Titans. He got home zero times and then was injured and missed the final eight games of the season. In Cleveland, his first year had nine sacks. His second year, two sacks, which then led him to Baltimore last August, where he had a career high tying nine and a half sacks with the Ravens as a rotational player and someone who helped them get to the AFC championship game. He was fantastic a year ago with the Baltimore Ravens. And my hope is that's the player the Carolina Panthers are getting. I'm hoping that the trend of going from zero to nine to two to nine and a half does not continue where we get the low end in sack total production out of Jadavion Clowney this year in Carolina. And because of the inconsistent play is why this is now the largest free agent deal that he has had. A part of my point when bringing up the times that he's signed saying he's never signed in March is that he has never been a priority for any team in the NFL, even after a nine sack season in Cleveland, the Browns weren't falling over themselves to give Clowney the money. And you have to understand negotiations are a part of this. It's a business. It's also a sport, as we know, and the business of football, Jadavion Clowney probably wanted a lot of money out of Cleveland, and they weren't willing to give him maybe as much as he wanted once free agency started in the middle of March back in March of 2022. He's gone on and he's gotten his money the last couple seasons. He had success last year and he's back here now home in Carolina looking at Tennessee. When he signed there was September 6th of 2020. He signed a one year, $13 million deal. The next year after that, signed with the Browns on April 14th in 2021 had a one year, $8 million deal. It was about 6 million in guarantees. Then he re-signed with the Browns on May 22nd, 2022 on a one year, $10 million deal, 8 million guaranteed last year signed with the Ravens on August 18th, 2023, one year, two point five million dollar deal. The money has fluctuated throughout the course of the last five years of his career, but now he's in a situation where he's getting the most money he's ever gotten out of a free agent deal, and he's back home. So you can look at the sack totals, and you can ask, is this going to be a good clowny year or a bad, bad clowny year? But looking at pro football focus, they love what Jadavion Clowney has done the past five seasons in Seattle, Tennessee, Cleveland, and in Baltimore, going back to last year, he had an 82.9 overall grade, which was 18th out of 112 edge rushers. 2022, he had a 75.8 grade, 27th out of 119 edge rushers. 2021, had 66.5 grade, that was 51st out of 110. And that's the year he had nine sacks. The year he had two, they gave him a higher grade than the year he had nine sacks in 2021 looking at 2020 where he had a goose egg 74.9 overall grade 19th out of 104 edge rushers and then in 2019 in seattle 80.8 grade 19th out of 104 so when you look at pff he's been a consistent player as far as how he's graded out when you look at the sack totals the sexy numbers it's been up and down peaks 
in valleys. The hope here in Carolina is that the number from last year can plateau, stay right there at that nine sack number, maybe even eight, and then have DJ Wonham across the way putting up what he put up last year, Minnesota, with eight sacks. It's a positive signing for the Carolina Panthers, absolutely, because they get a player who's from the area who has shown that he can be a good player. He is a good player. He has immense talent. He just doesn't always put it together as far as the numbers that you want to see throughout the course of a season, which has now led him to his sixth team in his 11 years as an NFL player. But this is a big signing for them. They beat out two contenders in the AFC, one a real contender, another a faux contender. They beat those two teams out for him, and they fill a major need on this defensive roster that's being reshaped after watching Brian Burns go to New York, trading Dante Jackson, watching Jeremy Chin leave, also watching Frankie Louvu leave, rebuilt defense, now DJ Wonham, and with Jadavion Clowney at the edge rusher spot. It's a positive for the Carolina Panthers, but I will say this once again. Signing Clowney, is not the difference between the Carolina Panthers missing the playoffs or making the playoffs. He's not a long-term fit here in Carolina as far as this rebuild. He is someone who's going to fill a need this year, possibly next year, but the Panthers still need to be looking for players who they can build with long-term, which is why I still believe the Panthers need to be interested in an edge rusher either at 33 or at 39. They need someone who's going to be here longer then two years down the road. So we'll talk about that here in just a moment on Locked On Panthers. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal of out hidden fees. Buy tickets and seconds with two taps take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code locked on that's l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n for twenty dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed now don't get me wrong I think this is a good move for the Panthers, of course, to bring in Clowney to see what he can do. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I believe he's going to repeat the totals he had last year. I'm going to remain skeptical just based off of what he's been sack total wise and numbers wise the last couple of seasons. As I just illustrated to you, PFF has consistently graded him as a top 20, 25 edge rusher over the last couple of seasons outside of a 2022 season where he had two sacks in Cleveland. I'm just curious of what player they're going to get. Now, when looking at the edge rusher spot here in Carolina, I'm more interested in the signings of players like DJ Wonham, who has shown time so far in his career last year in Minnesota, a couple years back where he had eight sacks, that this potentially could be a solid starting edge rusher for the Panthers to have for the next four or five years or so. For Clowney, maybe he's able to have a late stage career renaissance and stick around here for the next three, four seasons. I just am going to remain skeptical. That's the case just based off of the fact that he's been bouncing around the league the last five seasons or so he can be a good player. He has shown in the past that he absolutely has the talent and can produce for you. Just the consistency has not been there, which is why he has not signed a contract in the month of March until now now is it a big deal that he hasn't done it there's probably been times where he's just waited because he didn't want to go through certain workout periods which i believe was probably the case in 2020 with the titans and it was also a pandemic so understand how that factored in last year his market wasn't great and he wanted to wait until he could catch on with a contender and he did that in baltimore but now he wanted to get the money and with the jets clearly trying to sign him the ravens didn't seem to be as aggressive as new york or carolina were he had more of a market than he's probably had throughout the last couple of seasons in the off season. And this is not me trying to defend my, I'm just pointing out like, that's just kind of how things work out in the NFL. We see all the major deals that are signed typically happen right at the beginning of free agency. Then after that, 
it can be a lot of veterans like an Odell Beckham Jr. who's really been like this last couple season. Guys like Jadavion Clowney, who are names of who have produced in the past, who are trying to find the right deal for them, the right fit for them. And he feels like Carolina is the right fit. This is from Josina Anderson of CBSSports.com, who talked to Davion Clowney on the on the phone and quoted him saying, "We're going to be just 30 minutes away from home. It's where we do all our community and foundation work going into the season. Plus, my granddaddy is getting older, and last year we had a lot of losses in our family. So honestly, it just feels like a full circle moment being closer." Said Clowney. He spoke of Ravens. He also liked his visit with the Jets, but po both places were fits. But the Panthers pursued the hardest. This is this, this is a special day for us, according to his. His wife, uh, I, I don't want to get her name wrong. So good for them, honestly. Good for the Clownies. Good for his family to be able to have him back home, especially with a lot of things going on personally in his life with some loss. And I think everyone here can empathize with that because I'm sure that y'all have been in that situation where you've lived somewhere else, want to move back home, be close to the family. I can certainly sit here and appreciate that. And I'm happy for him. Truly am happy that a kid from the area, not a Charlotte kid, not I'm. He's not, he's from Rock Hill, but if a guy from the area, because yeah, I'm from Charlotte, y'all, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to claim someone from Rock Hill, even though, you know, it's right down the road, different state, different place, but it's good to see someone, local guy, done good, back here, wearing the black and blue. So I'm excited about that. I truly am, genuinely am. I know there's going to be plenty of you out there who don't believe me at all, but I had been saying, as like I had mentioned, oh, he hasn't played after signed in March. I'd also been mentioning whether he signs or not. If he signs, I think it's going to be a good move for the Carolina Panthers. I just don't think that that's something that's going to necessarily be the, oh, yeah, hell yeah, they got Clowney. This is the elixir that's going to fix everything with this defense. I don't think people are saying that. But rightfully so. Be excited about the move because the Panthers needed to make it. I just want you to understand that there is still a lot of work left to do at that spot. And in my opinion, in no way have the Panthers upgraded this offseason at the edge rusher position than what they had last year when they had Brian Burns and when they had Etor Grossmatos. Now, Grossmatos, that's a player who I wanted the Carolina Panthers re to re-sign. I felt like he wasn't a scheme fit going into last year. And then he proved a lot of us doubters wrong as he played really well in that defense. He's good against the run, and Clowney is absolutely good against the run. That's one of the things I think has really led to him having such a high grade on PFF is how good he is against the run. And the Panthers didn't really have that in Brian Burns last year, we're being honest. And really throughout his career, he's been kind of so-so in run support. So they have upgraded in that respect. I just don't think that when you look at the long-term prognosis for this Carolina Panthers organization, I don't think that they're in a better spot with Warnham and Clowney than they would have been had they been able to retain Gross Matos and Brian Burns. When you have a 25-year-old who is heading into the prime of his career, who's already been a two-time Pro Bowler, I would rather have that situation than someone who just turned 31 and has been fairly up and down the last five years of his career. But we'll see what the Panthers were able to to get out of him. And just to, to point out that cause it was interesting because I had someone tweet at me saying that they would rather have a situation where it's two years, $20 million for Jadavian Clowney. We'll see which Clowney we get than five years, $150 million of we'll see what we get out of Brian Burns. And I just find that hilarious how some Panther fans have turned Brian Burns is some sort of mercurial player last year because he had eight sacks. He had one down season after back-to-back -back Pro Bowls, and I'll beat, he's only had one double-digit sack season. And then again, like when evaluating Clowney and like evaluating Brown Burns, that's just one data point to look at. It's not the entire story of how things have worked out throughout their careers, but still, it's just interesting to me, the people that have kind of equated Brian Burns to being an up-and-down player when that is just far from the case and so many teams out there in the league would have been willing to pay him that much money if they didn't have to of course give up that much as far as draft compensation which really wasn't a lot at the end of the day and, and, and career-wise look at this Clowney has played 10 years 10 years 52 and a half sacks Brian Burns he has played so far five seasons he has 46 so they're not even comparable as far as the players that they have been so far in their careers. And Clowney has played twice as many seasons as Brian Burns. It is not in any way an upgrade, although I am I am interested to see what the Panthers are able to do if a guy like DJ Wonham and if they're able to potentially build this defense with him for the long term. Now, what Clowney provides them, I hope it's the best. I just got to see it, man, because... 
again, peaks and valleys. But looking at the rest of the edge rusher depth chart, like it's going to be DJ Willem. It's going to be Jadavion Clowney. Those are going to be the top two guys, of course, as starters. And DJ Johnson, that's a player who I think everyone's going to have. Not, maybe not everybody. I think a lot of eyes are going to be on him uh, throughout the offseason program and then getting into training camp in the preseason to see what kind of jump he's made from last year uh, to this season where he is someone who's already – up there at the age of a player who should be in the second year of their, or they're not the second year, but should be in their second deal as a pro in the NFL. Need to see some rapid growth from him. Amari Barno as well. Curious to see how he fits into this defense. And Eku Liotta is someone who Dave Canales mentioned on Tuesday is somebody who can really help them out at the edge rusher spot. Will that actually come to fruition? We will see how it all works out. Now, I did tease that we're going to talk about whether the Panthers should still get an edge rusher in the draft. Did not do that because I was talking about some other things with Clowney. So on the other side, let me pay that off and discuss whether the Panthers should still be in the market for an edge rusher in the draft. Yes, the answer is yes, they should. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney, whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook, the Sweet 16, starting on Thursday evening. The East Regional up in Boston, UConn. Can anyone stop the Huskies from going back-to-back and claiming their sixth NCAA championship? Then out west, the North Carolina Tar Heels, the number one seed, facing off against the Alabama Crimson Tide. The Clemson Tigers also in the Sweet 16 versus Arizona. Will we have a Caleb Lubb versus North Carolina game on Saturday? Go over the FanDuel and bet on that to happen right now. New customers, and that could be you. Get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads. Money lines. you can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. It's good that the Carolina Panthers signed Jadavion Clowney. It's good because they needed a veteran at that spot. It's also good because there was a massive need for someone to be a starting edge rusher for this team. And he's coming off a nine and a half sack season. And they beat out two teams in the AFC who wanted him bad in the New York Jets and a team who saw him last year and helped. He helped them get to the AFC championship game in the Baltimore Ravens, really a coup for the Carolina Panthers to get a player of Clowney's name and status heading into this 2024 season. Big move for Dan Morgan, for Brant Tillis, and of course for Dave Canales as he hopes to turn around this team beginning in 2024. And the best way to get the football right is to bring in some players who can play the football well. And Jay Van Clowney has shown at points and times in his career, albeit up and down, that he can get the football right wherever he is and hope is he'll do that here in Carolina. But with all that being said, the Panthers should still be interested in drafting that rusher once we get to Friday evening late in April, I believe on the 26th up in Detroit. It's still a major need to me. I think the two biggest needs when you're looking at the rest of free agency, it's corner. The Panthers, according to Joe Person, reached out on Tuesday to former Panthers cornerback, a former defensive player of the year, and also a former South Point Stallion in South Carolina Gamecock in Stephon Gilmore about whether he's interested in coming back to Carolina. Gilmore's been healthy and played well the last two seasons in Indianapolis with the Colts and last year with the Cowboys. I would love to see that move to have Gilmore opposite of J.C. Horn and God, this defense is going to have so many Gamecocks that happens. Horn's a Gamecock. One of them's a Gamecock. Clowney's a Gamecock. Just surrounded by, I'm not going to say, the, <laughs> surrounded by Gamecocks. Not going to leave out the game in Gamecocks uh, in, on this podcast today. Going to be kid-friendly for the show. And I feel like I'm always surrounded. I'm not going to I'm not gonna say it. All right. Um, I think that would be a good move for the Carolina Panthers if they can bring in Stephon Gilmore because I do see that as being something where you really need someone. And when I look at edge rusher, my concern still is like it, with corner, if JC, they could pick up the fifth-year option. If JC stays healthy, he's going to be a Panther for a long time. The problem is he just has not been healthy. So long-term with the corner spot, yeah, I still think they need to draft someone, whether it be at 33 or whether it be at 39 or they wait till the third round. I still feel like they need to draft someone to be the long-term guy opposite of JC Horn. But if JC stays healthy, you're good there at corner, at least at one spot. Edge rusher, there's still some long-term questions. DJ Wonham, two-year deal, really could only be one-year deal depending on how he plays this season. Have not seen 
the guaranteed terms for Jadavion Clowney. Even looking at it, I still feel like it's probably more of a one-year deal with a lot of money on the front end. He can hit the incentives, and possibly he sticks around for two seasons. And I would hope that would be the case, that he can stay around here for two seasons in Carolina, because that would mean he played well in 2024, and that warranted him to stick around for another season in 2025, of course. Would love to see that happen. I just, I'm not as comfortable, not saying I'm comfortable really at all with the corner spot. I'm not as comfortable just with Edge because I don't know whether DJ Wynnum truly is someone who is going to be a foundational piece on this defense at the edge rusher spot. I still don't know long term who's going to be at that other spot because it's not going to be Clowney, it's not going to be anyone that they were going to sign to be the other edge rusher opposite of DJ one. So because of that, I feel like this team still needs to be in the market come draft night for an edge rusher, whether it's at 33 or 39. I think they need to be looking early to try and get someone. If it's Darius Robinson from Mizzou, outstanding. He may be gone before then, but if he's available, hard to pass up at 33. Chop Robinson, Adisa Isaac, both from Penn State. I know there's varying opinions on both of those players. I've seen someone come out and say that one of the guys that they believe is overrated is Chop Robinson. Maybe it is. You like saying Chop Robinson. It's a nice name to say. I don't know if Adisa Isaac rolls off the tongue quite like Chop Robinson and have a player named Chop playing football. It kind of adds up, right? Like, Dick Butkus. That just sounds like a football player. Chop Robinson. It it also may sound like other things, but it sounds like a football player. He is a football player, and he's a pretty good one. At least he's been a good one at the college level. Will he be a good one at the NFL level? To be determined. There's also Chris Braswell out of Alabama. And you know what the Crimson Tide have done under Nick Saban. They've just put out a bunch of great defensive players into the NFL. I think that one of those four will make a lot of sense for the Carolina Panthers early on in the second round. I think it also would make a lot of sense that they would draft someone like Ladd McConkey or Keon Coleman if they're available. Troy Franklin at 33 or 39. Same thing with corner. And who knows? Maybe because they've brought in Deontay Johnson to go with Adam Thiel and they just took Mingo, who Dan Morgan is still speaking highly of and believes he's going to develop into someone who can really help Bryce Young down the road. Maybe because they brought them in and they've signed two edge rushers and one of them in Clowney to two-year deals where they could both be here the next two years, Gamecock and Gamecock, at the edge rusher spot, it could be possible that corner is a top need and then center is a top need. Do the Panthers go draft their long-term starting center early on in the second round opposed to getting an edge rusher or getting a wide receiver, two positions that we have talked a lot about since – free agency began and even before then trying to figure out what this team would do. It's nice with the Burns trade as much as I hated them actually doing it because the player is a good player and they're going to have a hard time finding someone to replace him and neither of the guys they brought in are going to be replacements for Brian Burns, like a suitable long-term replacement. It's not going to happen. They're not going to play at the level. It's just, it's just not going to happen. If I'm wrong about that, fine. I'll be wrong about thinking that Clowney and Woolnam won't be guys who can be long-term replacements for Brian Burns. I I'm happily fine being wrong about that if that does become the case. Y'all can throw it in my face and I'll eat it up and we'll do it. Like, I love y'all. Hope you love me. You know, it's, it's our back and forth, our relationship. Sometimes I say things upset you. Sometimes I say things that make you happy. It, it's what it is, man. And I, but I appreciate all of you tuning in and allowing me to say these things, whether you appreciate them or you don't. I just appreciate your support. And the support is listening and watching, whether it's hate watching or hate listening. It doesn't matter. If it's love, it's love. I feel love to you no matter what. But back to it, it's open up the possibilities. And that's the great thing about free agency really for a team. And Dan Morgan reiterated this on Monday morning down at the Carlton in Orlando for the NFL owners meetings. This is a team that wants to build through the draft. This is a team that does not want to use free agency in order to build their team. The teams that spend the most money in free agency are typically the teams that lose. The Panthers have spent a decent amount of money, but they spent it smart, wisely on Robert Hunt and on Damian Lewis at positions that made sense. They didn't spend a lot of capital to bring in Deontay Johnson. Now they're spending a lot for Jadavion Clowney. Certainly they're spending a lot and it's raising an eyebrow or two for your boy over here on the show and seeing that deal originally. Need to see what their full breakdown is guarantees why wise, but that, that did surprise me. They want to build through the draft and the best way for this team to really secure and find a franchise type of player at the edge rusher spot is Friday night 
April 26, up in Detroit. That's when they should do it. I still think they should be interested in doing that. They could even go out and get a tight end if that's what they want to do. But getting Clowney, getting Woolham, that should not preclude this team from still being aggressive. What a great scenario it could be if they have DJ Woolham, have Jadavion Clowney, and then they have a second rounder who, unlike DJ Johnson, actually played the position for four years, three years, however many years in college, and played it at an all-conference level who can step in and right away be a rotational player and actually help them on the field. That would be an ideal situation for the Carolina Panthers. Jadavion Clowney, welcome back home. He is a Panther. Congratulations, Panther fans. Something for y'all to be excited about, to be happy about. Absolutely do that. We'll just have to wait and see which Clowney they're going to get come this fall. That's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network Hosted by yours truly, Julian Council. Again, y'all subscribe and follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where on Fridays throughout the offseason, meaning tomorrow, I'll be right here answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions. So either at me or DM me to get those questions into me as soon as you listen to this show. But in the meantime, be safe, be happy. Be whole as always and forever. Keep pounding, and I'll talk to y'all on Friday.